The U.S. finds itself on the defensive this weekend. G20 members have implied that the Fed's action is egocentric in a now global economy. Gary Schilling was an early predictor of the global financial crisis. He says we shouldn't even be as worried about inflation, but we should take our eye and keep our eye on the ball of deflation. He also sees slow economic growth for many years ahead. Gary is writing about all of this in his new book. It is called The Age of Deleveraging. It is out on Monday. Gary, good enough to come in with us in the newsroom this morning. How much time does the world economy have? We just played a shot from UBS's George Magnus about, okay, if the G20 can't come to an agreement this weekend, I guess they always have next year. That's the next best thing. But for debtors and creditors, we have to be honest, right, U.S. and China, to work together. How much time do, does the world economy have to get it right? Well, it, it depends on the extent of protectionism, really. I mean, if protectionism can be held off, it's probably a longer time, could be a number of years, but protectionism is growing. And the reality is the U.S. consumer used to take the world's excess goods and services. The U.S. consumer was a buyer of first and last resort, but now consumers are retrenching. They're saving rather than spending, and there's nobody left to fill that role. So the, the world is really trying to work out a new system. Unfortunately, when everybody wants to export and nobody Everybody wants to import protectionism is the is the answer you mentioned this protectionist theme do you find it odd that Germany and China are standing together against the US when speaking about current account imbalances well not not surprising because those are the two big exporters in the world right now and obviously they're protecting their own interests they're both driven by exports if you didn't have export growth in, in either of them they would be in the same boat that that the u.s. is much slower growth D does it show how scary then it is for the u.s. i mean is the u.s. really going it alone it seems like it's everybody else versus the u.s. right now well in, in a way it is but that's that's all always true. You look at the in the 19th century, the British were the top dog and everybody was shooting at them and, and we're the top dog and everybody shoots at you. So, you know, that goes with the territory. But on top of that, of course, there is a question is what of the Fed is actually trying to knock down the dollar with the quantitative easing. They, they yeah, say they're not. They probably aren't directly. They usually are more concerned about domestic than international policy. But it is a it is a side effect. But again, the whole point is that we're seeing competitive devaluations. We're seeing countries, whether it's Japan, whether it's Taiwan, South Korea, even Switzerland, are trying to knock their currency down because they're trying to replace that U.S. consumer. Nobody says that. But my sense is that that's what's really going on in global sense. Replace that U.S. consumer and the way you do it is try to continue your exports even though there is no big buyer out there anymore. What about replacing the dollar as the world's reserve currency? I mean, it was an extreme view, but that said, we did hear from it from the Brazilian finance minister saying the real, the Chinese yuan, and four other currencies should be turned into sort of a basket currency, and that should be the world's reserve currency. Well, nice try, but that was true of the euro a couple of years ago, and then, of course, we saw earlier this year the euro eurozone crisis, and it's sort of knocked out of the box. But uh, I think in a practical sense, just in terms of the size, there really is no alternative now. Maybe in a couple of decades, China, if they decided they were going to they were going to make their currency, the yuan, freely uh, transferable and so on, uh, maybe. But but for the moment, I mean, their goal, hey, you'd have to go to $50,000 an ounce. Although suggests to, that maybe that's the right way to yeah, go. Yeah, maybe, maybe but, but nobody wants to be tied to, to gold. And how would you produce more to uh, ensure growth? I mean, in the 19th century, one of the reasons you had deflation is because you were tied to gold and then silver and there wasn't enough to go around. So, And, you know, there are not enough Swiss francs and and you look around, there just really is an alternative to the dollar. There are no other dollar. choices. But you, so you still like the dollar, even just from a, a simple investor's well, point of view, you say, look, the dollar is worth yeah, your investment. Yeah, I, I think it is. Now, it's been beaten up, but the dollar is, uh, but I think it's, it's been beaten up because we haven't had a big crisis. But the dollar started to rally in just the last few days. And it's because I think of the heating up, again, of the euro zone crisis. It's, it's Ireland now as opposed to Greece is the, is the uh, big problem area. But uh, the dollar is the best of the best bad lot is really the uh, <laughs> it's the, the safe conclusion. haven and I think we are going to have further problems abroad Europe looks like like it's the next big big uh, issue Gary thank you so much for the time Gary Schilling joining us and congratulations on the book